Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I would love to show you how you can create this gorgeous pink waterfall. It's actually probably a lot easier than you think. There's just a few strokes and steps and techniques that you've got to master, and I'm going to demonstrate every one of those to you so that you can create them for yourself at home. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He kind of tries to like wrangle me and keep track of me because who knows where I'm going to run around in the studio. But what I basically mean is that we have a variety of cameras and he switches the view so that my head isn't blocking your view that much. And so that you can see the color mixing and every brushstroke and everything so that you're really inside the painting action. Because the idea of this is that I paint a thing and then you paint a thing and I paint a thing and you paint a thing. And even if you haven't painted before, if you follow along all those steps, you're going to get a painting at the end of this video session, which I think is pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're a first timer. If you're first timer here, definitely give us a shout out and let us know if this is your first time painting. I wanna say hi to everybody in the live today. Hi, all the people in the live stream chatting. They are uh, all saying hello back. You guys are the best. Do you have your coffee this morning? I do. Are you all, are you I'm all sure after the up? last video, they're like, how coffee is she? Uh, it's like, <laughs> We have to check is it going to be meter. a weird show or not to be? Hard to tell. It's Saturday. Go either way. Weird show. Teacher show. No, I don't. I don't think I ever do that sort of boring droning. We're all going to fall asleep now. You have. I don't do that. I'm going to say no ASMR. Ask my kids. It's like all the time. Before we jump into it, your <laughs> hair looks fantastic. Oh wait! Wow. Yeah. This is accidental. I didn't even know I left the, the bathroom like this. It's like. It's like a flock of seagulls attacked your head. It's almost like a compliment, but then you kind of twisted it. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little turn. But you got to remember, I know where you sleep. Yeah, it's true. You have control over your food. These are things that you should think of. <gasps> you know what? There's a palette over here with some paint on it. Did you see this? <laughs> I saw this palette right over here. I, I do. I do see that, Mr. Cooney. <laughs> okay. So these are references that we have. There is... On the website, if you check the description below, besides uh, material information, extra links, extra stuff that you might need to know, there's also a link really kind of up at the top that takes you to our website. On the website, you can download a traceable. And there's even a video on that page to show you how to use the traceable if you've never done it before. There's also a printout like this in black and white. And then there's a reference. And the only difference is yours has a nice little watermark. So you don't forget that it was me. But yeah, yours has a nice little watermark. And you print these out. And once you get all that done, you make a decision. Do I want to lay it out freehand or do I want to trace it? Or do I want to just use the reference and go crazy? So all up to you. Today, we're going to be working on an 11 by 14 surface. Now, I use boards. I absolutely use boards. Boards are important. Um, for me, because I do a lot of paintings, um, as all my patrons know, because they got a sneak peek into the stacks. <laughs> I do a few paintings. <laughs> and so this has become necessary for storage because the 16 by 20s took up our big giant storage like that. So that's the only reason why it isn't better. It isn't worse. It's just if you're doing a lot of this, it's economical and it's good for storage. We like... We prefer, I'm not making, I'm sorry. I know I look and then it makes you feel like you got to switch. My hands are also good. Um, we have here that we like wishes and we like to put intentions and good ideas out there. So today's are that everyone experiences true kindness in their life. So we're hoping that whenever you run into this video, whenever you're watching shortly after that, that you find the experience of having something truly kind happen to you in your life. Maybe it's a a tollway getting paid for you. Maybe it's a kind word when you needed it, but I'm just hoping that everyone has that experience. I get blessed with this every day. I was thinking that I get blessed with this every day in the comments and in the groups and all of that. And I really want all of you to have that experience. And then uh, as we have launched officially, even though it's been going for years, officially our labs thing, we're wishing for everyone who's joining up massive success in their business and that you can live your dream. <laughs> Live your dreams. Okay. So, but yeah, definitely live your dreams. Never short yourself on dreams. I have here some optional tools that will help. I have some chalk. This is the kind you use on a chalkboard. I have a tool called a T squared. These should not be expensive. A few bucks. I have the colors doxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, Mars black, and titanium white. I may or may not, depending on how the painting goes, use a tinting white, but I 
don't know if I'm going to need it, so I'm not going to put it out till I know, know that I'm going to need it. Yeah. First step, super easy. Or so you think. <laughs> First step, super easy. I'm going to take a nice big brush. This is a nice big chunky brush. It's actually number 30 Ruby Satin Short Handled. If you'd like to know the very specific brush that it is. I'm going to drag off the water. I'm going to load into this brush. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And what you're seeing me do is a flip load. If I need a little more water, you can see me just hitting the edge. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Say the words. It helps. And what that's doing is that's pulling paint into the belly of the brush. And so you can paint out large areas of your canvas fairly easily, even with the thick, heavy bodied paint. Because heavy body paint is very thick. You have to thin it to smoothly spread it out. Mm. I'm going to dip this a little more, about a quarter of an inch up into the toe. You can see it's more water this time. And so I've loaded more water and I'm doing the flip load. And you can see that gets quite a lot of paint into my brush. And I'm going to just cover my whole surface with this fabulous, wonderful purple. It's Begin with purple, my friends. We could have begun with a black canvas, but I thought this would be more fun. Mm. Didn't you? You I had no thoughts on it at all. I did not have many thoughts on that. <laughs> I didn't all. even, before we started, know what we were painting. It's so true. All the time, John's like, what are we doing today? And I'm like, same thing we do every day, Pinky, teaching people how to paint. It's true. Now, notice here that as I'm brushing over this, these white spots keep happening. I don't know if John oh, can zoom yeah. in on that for you. Oh, hold on a second. Let me. I don't always get canvases anymore that do this. Most of the companies have kind of addressed this issue. Yeah. But it on occasion still shows up. So you see that right there, that spot? They're kind of like, like little snowflakes yeah. or dots. Yep. So this is where I put an ample amount of paint over. I have some water in it to thin it. And the, the surface is just mildly resistant. This is dry brushing. This is, it's supposed to do this. It's not supposed to do this. So I'm going to load up with a thicker level of paint and come over it. And you're going to see that it takes that away. Oh, yeah. Right. And so that's what it was, is that the amount of water in my brush was causing it not to stick to this surface. Because there's a treatment, I think, or something to prevent molding. This is my guess. This is not a factually confirmed verified canon thought though i have had some people also speculate they think that's what it is as well mm. in the art materials industry i'm brushing back and forth to smooth my finish and so if you're brand brand new guess what mm. you have done the first layer of a beautiful waterfall painting if your family walks in right now and they're what are you doing you can like totally and not ironically saying i'm painting a gorgeous pink waterfall can you not see it mm -hmm. When you become an artist, it's incredibly fun to mess with people because they never know if you're kidding. You could just tell them this is the blue phase. This is the blue phase. <laughs> just, just really any old thing you want. Mm -hmm. We've been misleading people. I'll have John tell you today about when we went to got, get coffee and we, <laughs> we sent a young person <laughs> on a perilous path to creativity in their future. While I'm drying the canvas, oh. John will tell oh. you about that. Uh, yeah, so in the morning coffee line this morning, we had a young lady who was saying how she was thinking about going into uh, movie industry. And I was like, absolutely, because I went to, uh, you know, you should, if you think you can and you want to, you should go after it. Because I, I went to high school a stone's throw from here. And when I was in high school, the thing I wanted most was to be into visual effects. But everybody said that wasn't a thing you could do. That was like make-believe. Nobody did visual effects. And I was like, so. And here I am all this time later controlling robotic cameras, watching my wife paint. Doing visual effects because you've been learning all those. Because, right, I have nothing else to do but to uh, you know, play It is with my color. great privilege <laughs> to right. tell people starting out that this, this is a real thing to do with your life. For real. And it's wonderful. And it's awesome. And you get to mess with people, which Did is you? a total bonus. And who doesn't want to do that? A little bit. In the nice way. In the nice and loving way. Not in the mean way. That sucks. But in the nice, funny way where they're like, ooh, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> Maybe they're crazy. Maybe they're not. Let's find out. Her hair is purple, though. Yeah. Could be. Know, could be. Nature's way of saying warning in so, oh, so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> I made you almost lose the coffee, huh? You did. But okay. he's not wrong. 
This is nature's way of saying, this woman is different. Did you know there's a pallet of pain over here? I do. Oh, I've already announced it. I know. I'm just okay. reminding you. So I'm going to come over here and I use my little handy dandy that printout as a reference and it tells you three and a half. Oh. So on my surface, I'll make a mark at the three and a half inch mark. And here I'll make a mark at the seven inch. So you see it says seven here. And then over here, I'm going to come to the ten and a half. And I'm going to make those marks. I was wondering what that was about. Were you curious as to their meaning? I, I, I was not part of the three, five, seven, ten club. No? Well, because that's, that's early morning work. You have wow to do early <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Azeroth must be saved. <laughs> Apparently. <sighs> I'm going to have to paint a Murloc here soon. I was thinking that, that we should just do a live Murloc painting for no reason. You know, for the five people also painting wow with us, let's all paint a murloc. But I was actually thinking that like a like a real painterly murloc painting. <laughs> all right. So now I have put those marks there. I get to do this other fun thing. I'm going to turn this on its edge. And if you look at this at the three inch from this side, from the top, five and a half and eight and a half. So I can come here. And at the three inch, make a mark. At the five and a half, make a mark. And at the eight and a half, make a mark. Now the grid on my paper does match the one that I'm putting on my surface. Sometimes you'll see me do a one inch grid. And that's when there's a lot of complicated details in there. But when it's just basically like, I got to be like, trees, 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 water, 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 water. There's just not a lot of detailed objects and I'm making general shapes. This is a better way to do it and keeps me from being overwhelmed by unnecessary visual information and also prevents the weird live erasing of grids mm. that we had the other day. Always finding a way. You gotta find a way. So we know that one of the ways if you lose which end is up, just remember that the shorter block is at the bottom. So you don't have to remeasure and recheck and just go, what's happening? So once I have this, how I use it is, is it sort of lets me know in what zone, in what area, and how much of that area an object takes up. So if I'm trying to say there's a little waterfall here, I just match the amount of grid space I see taken up there to what I'm going to take up here. And kind of rough that out in much the same way. So if right here at the top, there's a waterfall shelf that's happening. And then down below it is another little waterfall shelf that might be happening. Right, that we have. There we go. And this one kind of comes down here and it hits this one. And then there's another one that starts here and kind of comes down. And these are real waterfalls. The... And I know this one actually comes back a little bit on that grid, right? It's not really that many complicated things. You're just trying to say waterfall, waterfall, waterfall. <laughs> All right, so it's there. Is this one, and that's the bottom of it. Trying to make sure we're matching up. And so that's what you're doing. You're just trying to match up where your falls are so that when you're doing them, you have a nice, this one comes over a bit. And it comes a bit here. And then there's also kind of one here. This keeps, this is probably the most complicated thing about this painting is the falls. Because there's you just know, a lot of them going on. I'm sorry, for a minute there, I thought you were drawing a cruise boat. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see too. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know this was about a cruise painting. Okay, cool. I was yep, now there chat, is. <laughs> I looked over there and I was like, Why That's going to saying... confuse everybody, but you saw <laughs> 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 I'm going to make this nice little fall out here. And this is just how we take an image that we have in a photograph and, you know, find a way to, you know, maybe represent it in another way. So, you know, I can be like, oh, there's this fun fall and it comes back here. And then this one kind of comes forward. And there's a wild tree here, right? 
it's kind of hard to see in the black and white reference. Just well, I'm you guys have the good pink reference. Yeah, I've got it. When that, you're holding the black and white reference, you'll be glad it's black and white. Now you can uh, get this off the website. Yes, for free. Just go download it off the website. Do, 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 in the link in the description down below. Boy, that's never something you thought you'd like learn to say in an offhanded way. Yeah, but we've gotten good at it. <laughs> gotten really good at describing all the things that are in the description down below. <laughs> so... I'm just trying to show like, oh, I've got a shelf here and I know that I'm going to have one come down here. And you're just trying to follow the lines, right? And again, you have a traceable if this is just feeling sort of overwhelming, sort of intense, right? But what you may find is that it's just darn helpful to know where stuff is supposed to go. Darn helpful, technical term. You know, you might not know that this shelf should be this far up, you know, the piece and then have be able to come down here or, you know, that you have a little bank happening here, as banks do. Bank skis happen. Bank skis. <laughs> Don't. That's terrible. There we go. I guess it doesn't come that way over that far. It does come over a bit. So we're just trying to say, shove, 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 shove. And then all of this is really leaves and trees. So even though it's a simple series where this is going to come down and hit a level, and then it's going to come down a little bit, right, right, like there and hit a level, then there's another little thing coming back here. So there's a short level here and a second level here, and then another little level friend there. It's going to just keep it from being too overwhelming. Now. I'm going to grab one of my very favorite tools. This is a number 10 Cambridge Bright. This is a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. And I like it because it does a nice scruffy job painting things in a scruffy way. And we're going to need to do a lot of scruffy painting here, just so you know. So I'm going to load my brush here with the quinacridone. And I'm going to get a smidge to begin with of my doxazine purple. And we're going to just start making these little, see these little random, crazy little brush strokes. It's the beginning. And you can see it takes the chalk right out of there. Look at this flick. See, it's a kind of a back and forth flick. And then sometimes I'll change directions. And I'm not being particularly worried at the moment, right, to the direction of the leaves yet because this is what's called an underpainting. There's a lot of structure that happens in a painting that begins before you ever paint the actual painting. I, sometimes I feel like the actual acrylic painting is about the last third of it. This all is just the fun lead up. All right? Mm -hmm. so we've got this here and you can come up here and you're just laying down that first layer of magenta and we've got this great dark purple space that we've already laid in, so we know that's there, you know, as, as you'd want it. I'm not gonna worry so much about putting the trees in until I have a lot of the waterfall in. These, these middle ground trees, just, and certainly the foreground trees are last. If you're not familiar in a painting, things are structured into the background. Those are the things that are furthest back. Objects that take up sort of the middle central focus of the painting is the middle ground. And things that are coming towards us and are very close to us, that's the foreground. Whenever you hear artists talking about that, that's essentially what they're talking about. Be not intimidated ever again by terms of art. Mm. For they all have fourth meaning. <laughs> yeah, but I can't spell most of them. Well, none of us can. A lot I of it's Italian. When acridone, it's still... When it's not Italian, it tends to be French. It so what are you going to do about that? Me. And then when it's not any of that, it's Greek. So, you know, it just there's just certain things you got to deal with. <laughs> there's things you got you to gotta handle. You got you to gotta work out. Now, next to this fall, there's a little area I just want to get in now with my blue and my purple. It's going to be quite dark. And it's going to come really back here. 
And I just want to make sure that some of that is here in this area. And maybe a little bit here. And then definitely bring some of it down here. See how dark that is? Mm. That's going to be important later because this dark value is going to really help us pull forth our painting from the ether. Now I'm going to take my... <laughs> Did you just say you were pulling your painting from the ether? I am. And I'm also right now taking my phthalo blue and my phthalo green and I'm mixing them together. Not both plot points of paint, just some green, some blue. Mix like I mix, it'll help. And you're doing it from the edge. From the edge. Now this will be a little hard for the camera to see. Why? Because it's dark on dark. I, I thought that was tra more challenging for the camera. Not today. Not today? Today the camera's like, what, yo, I got it. Yep. No, no difficulties, right? It's like, <sighs> a little I'm no moisture R2 out of unit. my brush. Hmm? It's like, I'm no R2 unit. <laughs> what? Um, so we're just trying to make sure that these spaces that will be fall, right? That we've got them painted down. Now, I will kind of tend to run these brush strokes, even though they're quite dark, right? Down. In the direction that my fall, my water would be falling. And then along here, I will follow my line just so I don't lose that's where that is. And I can brush back and forth in this space. Look at this. So between this fall and this fall, I can brush back and forth. That's going to help talk about where this water has landed before it takes its next journey down. Mm -hmm. Down, down, down. And all of this, again, can be this sort of streaked. And I may need to move my canvas to the side to get nice directionality. And now, brush directionality is particularly important in water, right? Yes, very important in water. Why is that? Because everything in your painting informs your eye, including the direction of the brush. And water tends to do specific things as it flows. And if your texture, your implied line doesn't follow that, it tells your eye something confusing that it can't translate as water. Like generally speaking, water falls straight down. Right. It doesn't blow with the wind. You don't, that would confuse It would have to have quite a wind. You would, yeah, and it would confuse a viewer if they were looking at a painting of it. Yes. So it's better to make sure like gravity works. Gravity works. Otherwise they're brain and horizontal. Water has to be horizontal. Yes. Otherwise it's falling off of something. So now just to make this super easy and make sure your brush is dry. Notice I'm gonna really wipe this out on my towel to make sure no extra water's in it. I'm gonna grab a little of this white and we're doing a thing called loosely mixed. And what that means is I'm not incorporating the paint thoroughly, I'll come across here in this top and just pull this down. And then I'm gonna come here with a little more white and just tap across, just a little bit, up and down. Look, we're just tapping up and down. Oh, little splashy, splashy. Little splashy, splash. Get some more of my mid-grade there. Let's make another little Teeny tiny, small little fall. Small fall. It's a small fall, isn't it? Mm. Now in front of it, there's another small fall. So I'm gonna grab a little of my green and blue again. And there'll be like a little bit of a dark area and then another small fall. Can come out a little bit more. This is a very pretty waterfall area. Isn't it gorge? It's in, I believe, the Thailand National Park. Well, the Thailand National Park is where it's hmm. located. I imagine it, and that's very pretty. I think it probably is. Now I'm rinsing out. And I'm going to make sure 
that I blend kind of a little bit because I want there to be some distinctive dark values. Can you guys see how I'm doing that? Yeah. Making sure that's happening because we need that. I'll go get a little more white on here and just make sure that I can still talk about the fall. Because these are quite close to each other. It's like stairs. It's very similar to stair perspective. Yeah. Yes. Now there's another one that comes right here. And it comes forward a little bit, if you'll notice, leaving just a small amount of that area for um, kind of like a horizontal water. So what you do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to go back and forth a little bit right there, as you see me do. Let me do that. Yeah. In here. And if I need to get back into some dark, I just go right into my blue and I just come across here, wherever I need that dark. Right. I'll make sure I've got this here. We do want that downward space, but right now we're trying to just get the this sort of basic structure of the fall that I've got going. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. Now here there is a space of another fall coming out. And it kind of, and we sketched earlier, so we sort of know where it is. It comes out this way and joins back this way. And it falls forward like this. And you can see that I'm just pulling this brush stroke down. See, see the brush? It's loosely mixed. And that creates a lot of different little water spaces, doesn't it? This one can come down almost to here. Let's make sure we've got that coming forward. And again, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. I'll come that way. And then as I come out this way, that implies a second little ledge, doesn't it? Bringing that water down as well. Now we know that there's some trees and things in front of that one. So we don't have to be that specific about what's going on there. And then there's this forward area and we're going to go ahead and get a little more green into our turquoise as you see me do. And I'm going to come here along that old chalk line. And I'm going to try to make sure I have this fall wandering out that way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just go back and forth. Look at that. Back and forth. Starting to talk about the surface of this water. Is that not tripping you out? Mm -hmm. oh. Back. Am I in the way? No. My fault. Back and forth. I bumped. Now, I'll bring this water back into where I know I have my trees just because I'll want those leaves to have some of this peeking out. And I'm going to go ahead and take some of this color and uh, start talking about this maybe back here a bit, like you do, about this, this part of the water. And some here. Look at us go. And you start to see shelf, 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 shelf. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. And get a little of my yellow into this and some of my white. And you can even start to brush back and forth. Look at that. Brushing back and forth very lightly. Look at us go. We're so amazing. We're so fantastic. We're brushing back and forth. I feel like there needs to be a little bit of this here at this shelf. Look at that. We just bring this little lightness of being into these other shelves to create highlights and that helps them appear to be what they are which is you know little areas where the waterfall has stopped before it falls down again now back into our basic turquoise there is I'm sure i've got a good view on it another little shelf that happens from about here and it's going to come out like that. That's going to come back a bit. And what I love is there's another shelf that's back here that flows into this one. So to show that, what I'll do is I'll get a little of my white on. Pull that down, implying that peak of one. 
some long hair to the top of this and pull some more waterfall down. Again, what are we doing? We're just finding little spots of our waterfall and helping it, the waterfall down. And are you already starting to see the fall take shape? Oh, yeah. Falls can be really intimidating to beginners, but I feel like there are elements of them that are so beginner friendly. Let me come right here again. There's another little, a little more white onto my. Now this water I can kind of be a little rougher with. It's hit a, it's hit a close stone. So maybe it's doing that. And then above it, we've got a little bit coming down here. Mm -hmm. And then long right here, doesn't it? Now off here, let's bring that down, coming off this kind of with force. From where the tree is going to be, we'll have to get shadow and everything coming here. Pull that straight down. And it's sort of a dry brush, so there's not a lot of water in my brush. I'm sketching in my fall. Don't need to be fussy or crazy. Just enjoy this. Nature gave it to me. Nature makes it easy. And then there's a little bit of a sort of like it implies that there's some kind of coming off a rock here. Shooting that way. And again, pull some water falling down here. This is that first sketch. This isn't the us being worried too much about it. And we've got some of that back and forth water. You can see that now here, can't you? Got some white into my thing. We've got some coming right there. And some right here as well. All right, let's take a minute. Let's sip our coffee. I'm going to stand back and look at it. You guys stand back and look at your painting. Mm. It's always a good idea to get back and look. You know, make sure that you've got everything where you want it to be. I may go ahead and size down my brush a little bit because I want a little more control. So same type of brush, but I think I'm going to try for number six. And I'm really, really going to get all about it right now. So I'm going to take my green and my purple. And I'm going to exaggerate some fall shadow. See how we're doing? Getting little shadows there. Making sure that we can really see those. Might be some right here. It is the exaggeration of these values that are really going to get us through. That's from this water. We know we're going to do white, but let's bring some of this back up. In varying heights. Look at that. Stroking up and down in varying heights. And this is the purple and the blue. You can see it's very contrasty against the aqua, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Important stuff. Why we pick the colors that we pick. Are we going to come back here with a lot of white and stuff? Yes, we are. But having this here is going to help us so much. I'm going to come here. Just make sure. That I've got that value that I'm going to play against. I mean, where the water hits. Mm. If you need to, mist your palettes or you can always get a stay wet palette, but be prepared that sometimes acrylic paint dries fast. I have to put out, uh, I don't have to. I often put out my painting, uh, my paint at the beginning. Simply because I'm coming right here and adding a shadow. This will help pull one fall line out from another. See how I do? Yeah. It's just, we're just kind of piecing out. Like if there's a tree here, we're going to make sure that that's got a bit of a shadow under it. Because we would want one. And there's maybe some shadow over here. There's definitely some shadow here. 
against the fall that we've already got going. These are just the nicest things to paint when you're just needing a decompressed day. Yeah. I'll make a little bit of a shadow there so we can really exaggerate that fall. Okay. Now, back into my favorite mix. Make sure your brush is super clean from the purple. You don't want any of the purple in what's next. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and get a little of my white. I'll make sure it's got some of this aqua in it. It's a, it's a much brighter white. Come across here and pull that down a couple places. Then play with this. You'll notice that I kind of get my little brush on its little corner. You can see I get load the corner and then I can add some of these white flashes. So there we go. And then definitely right here. Put some of that in. Finding the exaggeration of what we're looking at. Find your exaggeration of what we're looking at. Coming along the top and then pulling that white down. If it gets like kind of chunky like that for me, I will come through and, and, and make sure that I've got the streakiness that I need because I do need it. Now here, in a couple of places, we can actually have some of that splash. There's some splash. You're just talking about a little bit of splash, right? Yeah. Where maybe the water is hit and is coming back up because the surface is shallow. Now I can always come in and take a little of my green and blue again. A little more to the green. Even add some yellow into it. Some of my white. And start talking about those little distant water reflections. Look at those. There could even be maybe some of this happening here. Little highlights back and forth. Gonna grab some more white and from the top, very lightly here, the hair on there. Very lightly here. And pull some down here. And I'm just exact. you see how I'm pulling that fall into it? Let's put a lot right here. Look at that. How are we doing? Good. How is everyone doing? Are you falling your falls? Yeah. Um, I'm chatting with everybody out here. As you should, John. As I should. As you should. Between my switching. Between your switching. As you should. Now definitely here at this base, we get a bunch of this little water coming. Look at that. Tapping it up, making that sort of irregular little base. Rinse out. Go ahead and get a little of my blue and green again. And kind of create the top surface, doesn't it? Create a little bit of that top surface. So we're playing horizontal strokes against our vertical ones. And that's going to carve our shape for our fall. There's not too many more steps, actually, weirdly enough, for the fall. 
Hvad for, for, for? If you need more color in your paint, you can always like get some more. So you can put like blue on that. That sort of changes its aspect. Pulling some down here like this. I know this is behind a tree, but it will peek out. And so I do want to have painted it. All right. Now, I'm going to wipe off my brush like you do. And I'm going to come here with just white, beat it on here, and I'm going to do something very important. At the top of this, I'm very neatly going to create the reflection of what happens when the water is bending down the fall. You see that? Yeah. And I'll add some hot spots that pull down. Not all of them, but some of them. I need to get a little water on there because this brush is a little bit fuzzy and crazy. <laughs> I'll do that. But it's just important to have that little reflection. That we're playing with. There we go. Now you can kind of see the just variance that's happening there. Yeah. Pull that down. Pulling it down. How's the pull going? This is looking really good. Yeah, it's, it's a fun thing. Just like going to a waterfall helps relax you, painting a waterfall can help relax you. Just make sure that I got my nice highlights here. along and just be like bit of that splash right if I need to get some more white into it I can come here and splash up some of that splash fun it's always just fun to do in paint you can just enjoy your time painting more white at this reflection. Again, a little more white at that reflection. A little splashy water. So you just want to step back and be sure that what you're seeing is clear, defined little stairs of water falling down. Now there would be at the back here quite a lot of splash kerfuffle. Right, because all this water is hitting this little space. You can come right here and talk a little bit. Look, we're wiggling out the splash kerfuffle. Get a little splash in there. Yeah, a little splash in there. You mean just working the little brush around? Mm hmm. I'm just talking about splash. When I have that first level of splash sort of worked out, I can load up with a stronger sense of white and I just come on my corner like I showed you. Just nice, enjoyable painting. <laughs> Tapping that out. Really, the brush is moving up and down. And are you using titanium white there? Titanium. I haven't even pulled out any sort of tint or zinc or mixing white. This is just a very, very opaque white. Just a very opaque white. Just regular old titanium white. But if you're in book club, you know titanium white ain't no regular thing, and it's a big deal. Mm. It's a what? big deal. Book club. Book What's club. book club, Sherpa? Well, if you were on our Facebook group, the Art Sherpa Official, 
we have a book that we're reading, and each week we do meet up after our uh, video announcements. Like, that's where we tell everybody what's coming up, talk about it a little bit, take some questions. We go over the chapter that we're reading. Right now we're on orange, but we already did white. and learned all about how awesome it is that we artists today have titanium whites so we can have these wonderful moments. What book are you on? Uh, we are uh, reading, uh, let me sip my coffee. We are reading and have a little break and look at it in the mirror. The, the, the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It does kind of it reflects back to you because there's a little, she has a, a little studio monitor over there. So you can kind of see, she sees what we see. I see what you see. And, and then I, I can, go, John, is it supposed to look like that? And look, it's like, how see, am I supposed to do nothing palette, about it right now? There's this camera. Mm -hmm. I have other cameras. You're funny. So um, it's Victoria Finley, A Natural History of the Palette, is one of my very favorite books about painting and color and all of that. And I think it's a must-own. Must-own. You must own it. How are you doing on your little waterfall? Mm. Well, I'm watching yours come in quite nicely. <laughs> well, you're not doing very well at all. <laughs> so, say, my waterfall is coming in great. Thalo blue, thalo green, a little bit of yellow, and some white. And we're going to go ahead and start to just talk a little bit about the choppiness of our water. As you might want to. Mm hmm so right now what we're doing is we're roughing in. These are not the fine details. These are not the little refinements. These are the broad strokes. Have you ever heard people say the broad strokes? This is what yeah. that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Making the broad strokes. I had always thought in terms of like painting a house. No, everything is about arts. Um, you know. <laughs> We're just painting with broad strokes here. I'm just letting here. you know everything is about artists. We're just painting with broad strokes here. We're just painting with the broad strokes. I'm going to get a little more white onto here. Here's a wonderful little bit of light reflection coming through the water. You can talk about as if a little bit of sunlight maybe hit some of these little spots more. Other little spots. Fun stuff to do. So notice how my brush strokes are always super horizontal. Mm, that was what you were talking about earlier. That's important. Huh? Yeah. Just trying to make sure that the direction, even if the water's choppy, it still has to sort of fall into that we horizontal space. Okay, we're just doing the broad strokes. We're just laying it in. And then we get in at the very end and we tighten it up with lots of little details. We get the details in at last. All right, so next layer, we're going to go back and forth. I'm going to take a little of my blue into my green and again, get that yellow in there and some white, sort of fun stuff that we can do. And let's come here and start to talk about what's happening here. Now over here, there's a lot more going on. This water's choppy. There's there's uneven rocks and things, and that's what causes this on a fall. Right? Is if if the water is moving against several angled surfaces, and it's got to fight both of those. That's what's going on. Grab a little more white while I'm here. Broad strokes. And again, we'll detail this waterfall in a little bit, but right now we're getting the, the overview. And then we come in and we refine small details to tighten the composition together. I may move this to the edge just so I can enjoy the process of falling the water down. Come get a little more. And again, broad stroke, what do we got going on here? Some of the sort of like 
we know that it's like this, but there's this very choppy water also happening. And then a little bit of a lightness coming off here. And we will refine it with our details and a sharper little brush, but right now, up. Don't you love them? I do. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my blue and green again and some white. Just make sure that we've got some of this starting to be expressed out in a more refined way. So when we come back to do the refinements, we only have little refinement works to do. We don't have major overpaints to do. Hit something here. Pull that straight into that. I can always rough that back up like that. And I come over here. This one is a little bit in the darker space. So maybe we pull this like down a bit. There we go. How nice is that? And now, whoops, <laughs> I just paled my poor canvas. Hmm. I'm going to rinse out really well. And we're going to start talking about our trees. So our next layer right, of this, I'm going to just get into my magenta. It's fairly uh, transparent, but it'll be nice to get into. And I'm going to start touching my brush and talking about these individual little leaves. Can you see me doing that? Yeah. So fun to do that. And then uh, we've got a nice little bunch here. They're coming down and touching and thinking about. Sounds like I'm doing something really inappropriate with my canvas. <laughs> Touch your canvas. Hmm, no. I get permission first. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just continuing to, you know, get the structure of this wild foliage that's going on. All right, pulling that down. And you're you're finding the shape and the form here is what you're doing. <laughs> And we're just capturing that. Now over here, some of these are, are more in a downward type of stroke. So see, we're going in a downward stroke. We have lots and lots of refinements that we're gonna work out here, but this helps us see. I don't know if you can see it all. And in here, I can even go ahead and get into my burnt sienna, maybe even a little of my black. And let's talk about their being here. Some little tree trunks. You can even get a little white onto it to see them. Too much white. <laughs> Too much white, yo. We want to. We want them in here to be visible, but not visible in the way that you're. They're. They're hidden amongst the leaves, if you can see what I'm saying. And I'm talking about some of this, this stuff that's right here. It's not around too many places. You can imply a little bit here. You're just talking a little bit about the trunk.
and the way that those structures go in. So notice that I've leaned some, I have some vertical, I'm on the edge of my brush to get those. I'm just playing. You should just be playing too. And here I can be a little even more kind of rough about the brush strokes, even down here. Because maybe that's like fallen leaves, right? Mm. Getting those basic overviews. I love this here. We get back into the shelving structure. And when I when you hear me refer to those things, I'm really basically talking about the di direction and shape of these leaves. Now, I am going to get out some tinting white because this is where it will become very useful for me. I want to lighten. I want to use tint white. There it is. Which is off, often called zinc white or mixing white. It's transparent and it allows me to make subtle, delicate little changes to what I'm doing. So like if I wanted to take a little of my purple and maybe a little of my burnt sienna together, I can find the color lighter without creaming it up. So it lets me make these subtle little values in here where I need them. Look at that. Subtle little value where I need it. I like subtle little values where I need it. Be subtle. I like a little beige and maybe come here. So this is like the deadfall that we're kind of seeing in the deep tundra. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? Mm. Some way you like them. Let's get back into the pink. Now back into this pure pink. This time I'll get a little of my tint into that pure pink. Because up here, even our lightest value is, for all, all purposes, pretty light. So our darkest value is still a pretty light value. And we are, again, just trying to really talk about foliage, forest. That's very structural, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now I can always come and get a little of my yellow into this magenta and a little of my tinting white. And as I come down here, I can warm that up. Everything over here is pretty, pretty warmed, I feel. And what's great here is some of this begins to encroach out into all of the fall and even down into here. I want to do that, to imply that. Lovely. Rinsing out. Thoroughly. Now here, more of my mixing white, tinted white into this, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening. There is a little bush. He kind of comes out of here. And look at this little wiggly, crazy, scrapey. Fun. You can wiggle, scrapey. Look at me wiggle scrapey up and down. See me twist the brush. I don't know if John can capture how the brush twists and plays. Well, I do see you spinning the brush a bit. Yeah. And you're trying to capture different angles of the brush. And bring some of that up here. I have to say, my camera work is not as smooth today as I would like it. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm sure everybody's holding on okay. Yeah, you know, just... Are they screaming no? No, you just, you know how you're always more critical of yourself 
Yes. I'm just noticing my little R2 is a little jerky today. He's like, I need to be smoothed out. Uh oh. It does that. So there's the the kind of basic little shape we we thought, you know, might be a, a little bush there. And then I'm going to come over here and say, oh, and we have another little frame. Remember how I said there was a lot of this was just painted out? Mm -hmm. That's what we meant. Let's just get a nice little beginning of this pink right here. A little more pink this time. So you're really sort of letting some of the fall peek through. But you want to make sure that you've got some there. I'm going to really, really dry off. I'm going to get a little of my black and brown together. And I'm going to talk a bit about the trunk structure here. There's a little bit of one here. It's a fairly big little area I've done. I'm going to define it by its highlights and a smaller brush in a little bit. Right now, the overall bulk of maybe some of the larger bits of the twigs I want to get in here. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get some of my blue. I'm going to come underneath this. All under this and talk a bit about how that might darken some of the stuff because it casts a shadow. And that does. Mm -hmm. So that's another place that we find form and value. Casting shadows under cute little adorable plants. More leaves, please. A little more yellow into my pink this time. And a lot more of my hinting white. Let's get back and let's really work us. Some little leaf pop. And back that, I'm touching that out. Capturing just the top. Just the top. One down here, just the top. Maybe even a little more this time. Lots of little dabs. There's a lot of dabbing here. We're going to dab right here. Is that the top of a little branch coming down with little tiny leaves and flowers and things? Yes, it is. Maybe I get into my yellow a bit and a lot more of my tinting white. I pull some of this out by warming it. Look at that. Just have fun. Find the top of your branch and cast a little sunlight on it. Pull it from the darkness of the jungle into a little beam of light. Underneath, you can take a little of your doxazine and your magenta together. And again, wonderful, delightful. You see that there? It'll come out here. And I can wipe off and I can get some of my darker color and see how using the darker color you can kind of blend in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So not only did we plant the the seeds, ha ha ha, of that. Man, 
I keep this is it, I want to, I'm trying to catch the load of your brush there. I just go pull, pull. That's all I'm doing. And show us that that's a mix. It's got a. I mean, it's you're not blend. You're you're not. No. Mixing it, you're having a nice marble. Loosely mixed. And then we can see it there. And then it mixes all on the canvas as well because the paint underneath is also wet. And I'm just finding that little shape of that little area here. And I'm just playing. Feel free, like, feel like you can play. Sometimes we get into a, a surface. I'm always drying my brush out on a towel because the brushes that are a mix of bristles and filaments can get very soppy. And I'm negative space painting, so I'm painting back into the branch above it, helping create some depth maybe. And then hopefully pulling some wonderful Exciting things out of the background. Let's just go right here. See, I'm just kind of deepening that. It's going to help me in a minute. You can always come and get just a little bit of this and maybe imply the lightest little trunk structures. Look at that. Just a little bit hidden in. They're not overwhelming. And now I'm going to take a little of that and a little of that, mix them together. It's like an orange pink, it's almost a coral. And begin this wonderful next kind of plant. There's like this. Great little structure of vines and leaves coming down here. And this downward swoop. Look at us go. Breathe in, breathe out. Tap in these leaves. You can do this. This is in you. You're capable of this. You can do it. You can go tap, 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 tap. I promise you that you can. It may feel weird at first. It may take you a second, but you can do it. I'm going to get a lot more of my, guess what? Mixing white into that. And here, maybe at the front of it, I will sort of exaggerate some of those little. Faces, right? I could come and get a little of my yellow. Exaggerate that back here. Look at that. So exaggerated. Exaggerate some things. You know, you don't want to exaggerate in life if you can avoid it. But do exaggerate on your paintings, please. Start a rumor. Definitely exaggerate. Mm -hmm. Be dramatic. Get all that drama you've had pent up in you all week and put it on that surface. Look at that surface become something. Look at us tapping those little leaves out. Finding that next little tree, right? Then back into the magenta as you might want. And then watch this. We're going to now, whoop, titanium. Oh, totally different there. Super opaque. Very noticeable. Look at that. That's way more noticeable, isn't it? Yeah. Just pull little little leaves and things out. We'll start that room. Rumor that there's a tree right there. Now, if you wanted to mix it up and throw uh, Q-tips at this. Yes, you could Q-tip this. You could sponge this. If you learned another technique for me by which you feel more comfortable, you feel like it's easier for you to accomplish the goal, by all means, feel like you're allowed to implement it. I'm going to put out a little more of my quinacridone here. Yay! 
So, if and I I'm was, gonna put out a little more of my tint white. If I was watching and saw you, you know, your finger painting video, and I decided I wanted to get you my pinky finger, put a little pinky. Have a blast. That'd be pretty cool. Just enjoy yourself. Yep, you can. Now I'm going to make a little of my phthalo turquoise, which is, again, my blue and my green, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to wipe that off my brush because I don't want any extra pigment on there. And I'm going to go ahead and work this into my magenta. It makes a whole different, different kind of... And now these strokes are going to be kind of like this. See, they're downward. So not only am I using values to talk about different areas or zones in my jungle, brush directionality, types of strokes are all helping me find that space. Ah. Oh, it's hot today. Hot today. All over the world right now, it's hot today. That's what they're saying in the news. It's hot today. I like how they report something that we're currently all living in. It's hot today. Really? Is it? Are you sure? Because I went outside and I only melted. You know, yeah, it's funny. I, uh, I, I think one of the funny things is that uh, Houston is on the same latitude as Cairo. Only we have 98% humidity. So. So let's be jealous of Cairo for a minute. That's, yeah. <laughs> let's be jealous of Cairo. That's exactly. So if you think. Cairo. Don't all you. Right. Titanium white has gotten on my brush, and you can see it lightens things up a lot. Titanium. I'm even catching some light on these, right? Mm -hmm. Who can't do that? We can do that. Next little tree. I'm going to get back and look. Fuzzy waterfall painting is coming together. I'm liking it. Okay. Now let's just get into our just regular magenta. Just our plain old magenta. And our... I make a little patch of light or little peaks of things that are coming out, but you can see I'm just giving this next layer this distinctive pink feel. Don't forget to go back to where you were and kind of layer some of your plants over each other because plants are not orderly. They don't, well, unless we plant them, then they're forced to be orderly, but in their wild state, they compete. They grow into each other. They fight for resources. So your plants need to be a little bit of brawlers out here. Yeah. You know, you got to let your plants brawl just a little bit. Oh, some of those leaves came in and brawled. And maybe some of these came right here and brawled too. Look at that little brawler snuck in trying to make its way. Making your way in the world today. Take everything you've got. Not if you've got a place to hang out. You know, where everybody knows your name. Do they? Do they know our name here? Actually, we know a lot of people's names here. <laughs> it's true, though. There you know, we go. You can come on into the Art Sherpa, hang out, see Norm over there, just hanging out. For like 10 people who want. I think more than 10 remember, but not yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the elder millennials, right? The elder millennials. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of them remember the Snapchat and the landline. Mm. But only vaguely. It's like a distant thing that might have happened, like a rumor. Mm -hmm. Like those kids in uh, Mad Max, the original Mad Max, that they also don't remember. You <laughs> We used to measure internet speed and baud rate. <laughs> this was not an option in the good old days. 
<laughs> Watching me pain for entirely too long? Not even something you could do. I think to download the reference image on a 300 baud modem oh, would take 20 my gosh. minutes. Yeah. Just... You know, would still be downloading your references next week. Yeah. It'd be... And if anybody picked up the phone while you were on the internet, or at then it wasn't internet, it was a peer to peer connection with some un- other computer, unless you were on ARPNET or something like that, because your friend hooked you up down at the college. Not saying that happened. Just that's really about the only way you could get on. That's true. That's so true. We got distracted. By? I don't know. Something Pop shiny. culture references Pop culture in my <laughs> endless little dotty leaves. How are you guys doing on your endless little dotty leaves? We're digging it. You're, we're just. You know, paint a pink forest. Mm. Now I'm into the titanium white man. I'm not playing no more. We're like, this is business, yo. Super fun. Super fun. Because all through here, little bits of uh, leaves have caught the bright light, haven't they? Mm hmm. And we'll just talk about that a little bit. Little bits of leaves that are catching patches of bright light. Bright light, bright light. <laughs> Best ma- Mao guy you've ever heard in your life, Mogwai. Mm, my life, my life. Got a pretty good ET phone home, too. <laughs> Do not have a decent Aussie accent. So, of course, that's what ended up on Draw with Jaza. <laughs> huh. For actually all of the internet to see, not just my weird little corner of it, because he's got 3 million subscribers. Because he's awesome. If you haven't checked him out, you totally should. Just a delightful, delightful artist and human being. Yeah. I kind of Sweet like man. That. So see, we are just adding this light to leaves. We're layering, 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 aren't we? Having a wonderful, fun day painting. Painting, 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 painting. Who's painting? We're painting. We're painting. Now just making some of these random little multi-directional leaf marks. These multi-dimensional directional leaf marks. Mm, they make those are those fancy leaves that grow on that what kind of tree in Thailand. I can identify it because of those brush strokes. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> I was about to be like, I don't think that's true, but with my husband, you never know. <laughs> so, like, I never like to take a real stand anymore. Like, you don't know, because that's when he does know. <laughs> <laughs> what was... No uh, other times, just then. Like, me and the peacock, we have a 100% bluff. <laughs> Actually, John bluffs more and talks more smack than words he's doing. <laughs> It makes very funny card games because then, like, especially if you can see he's not doing well, and you're like, dude, you know you're not winning, right? I am winning. I have a plan. You don't know my plan yet, but there is a plan. <laughs> I don't really think there's a plan. I think you're just really, really losing. <sighs> I'm not losing. I have a plan. I have a cunning plan to come from behind. I have a plan, and it involves the cunning use of turnips. Turnips. Nobody expects a turnip plan. Nobody expects an attack with turnips. Set Monty Python. They're fully prepared. Well, I guess the British. British are ready for some turnip attacks. Rabbit bunnies. Pandaren. And shrubberies. I 
All right, still going. Yeah. You can sneak up on him with a regular submarine, but a yellow one, not at all. You're right. Yeah, it's a... Uh... In here, going along. Open these. That wonderful multi-directional leaf, isn't it? Yeah. Let's do some here. Okay. More pink, more pink. We gotta build some of the deep dark in the dark, dark night. And you're really using your brush far away. Yeah, I am. Not only am I out of your way today. And looking much like a swashbuckler, hand on hip, examining my surface, enjoying all I survey. This is my canvas. And I am the master here. No, um. Having a blast. Having a blast. I'm just feeling good today. I had a recent life epiphany. Yeah? Yes. Would you epiphanate? It's not really a smart epiphany. I think it's probably some wisdom I've gotten from everybody for years. Right? But I am learning to give my energy only to the places where it belongs. And that is really helping me. Instead of trying to disperse my energy where it is not needed, is not wanted. I'm learning to recognize when people are just not wanting help as much as just wanting to yell. So that's like helped with my social media. I can just get to the people who have art questions easier now. And that's good for everybody. I'm feeling a lot better. Feeling really good. I'm feeling really good, Joe. I'm going to get more. This on here. You can see I'm just, isn't that fun? I love to see these little wonderful bits come into space, come into being. Yes, we're going to get in there and we're going to really carve out our waterfalls. And we're going to really do some stuff, but this is wonderful to me. The trees especially is the beginning. And you guys are hanging in on this, you know, nice long Saturday painting. Which is good because there probably won't be a live for a minute. So really, really enjoy this one. We'll be back soon. Just got a lot of stuff to do. So there'll be uploads. Really awesome uploads. You should totally watch and love. Please, please, if you see a notification from me, go view it for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Would be super helpful. I'm kind of really enjoying that. Now, I'm going to get some white into my brush. You're going to notice me working it in. Nice and just pink. Oh, look at that. Just tapping in little flirty little leaves leaf flirts so add a little yellow to that and it creates a little zone of Kind of pop. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And just come back into my magenta. Keep working that. Little space right here. Little tree right there. All right. 
get a small detail brush out, maybe like a round. Yeah. Or a bright. Either is fine. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to mix some of my phthalo blue and my phthalo green together. What you doing there? And I'm going to come like to the top of my waterfall and I'm going to just make sure that that is sort of thoughtful. And I'm going to piece in little bits of the running shadow. Can you see that? I'm just making sure that the things that I have look the way that they're supposed to. And, you know, you might get into your phthalo blue if you need it. If I need my white. My paint's a little dry, so I'm inclined to want to put some out, if that's okay. Yeah. So what happens is my paint is drying and didn't mist it enough. You didn't mist it? Enough. Enough? Enough. And right now, I just want to work some of my purple. What, I mean, my blue, my phthalo blue, my phthalo green. Phthalo blue, phthalo green. My titanium white. What is the T-O-W? Titanium. Here. Run the AC. I don't know. Oh, my God. It's sweating. Sure. Hold on. Sweating. Do, what do, am I doing? Do. I'm sweating. And where necessary, some doxazine purple. Thank you, babe. Do, 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 what are you doing? Oh. All right. Put them over there behind the. So, I'm going to get some of the white now. And now it loads onto my brush a little nicer. And the reason for that is it's not dried. Now, which brush are you using there? This is just a number four round. Number four round. Okay. I'm just making sure that some of these shelves appear like sharp. And we're really feeling that waterfall as it's coming down. You just added some water to that? I'm adding some water and I'm swirling it around to improve the flow off of my brush. That's important, that squish you do there. Yes, it's super important. That squish... If you gets, don't do it, you are lost. It's all of the material out of the brush and then lets you reload it on the tip. Am I observing you correctly? You are observing me correctly. What you see me doing now is some detail work in my waterfall. Maybe that little thin little little splash that's happening back here, right? can work these little details out. So one of the things about like painting that we forget is that we can do some broad strokes. We can enjoy ourselves there, right? And then if we want, we can come back and detail parts of it as is needed. Now, so if I wanted to do like this together and just make sure that this back here, maybe it was a little more in shadow and I can do that easily, can't I? Detail paint my waterfalls. 
there for improving the look. Do you see how the fall is sharpening up as I come mm, in and I work it with my detail brush? Yeah. You're definitely getting sharp, sharp, sharp. And that's sometimes what you want. Sometimes what you want, what you want, what you really, really want. Sometimes what you really, really want is the ability Pull your details together. So if I want to have a little shadow down there, I can. And if I want to really work this, how much can I do that? And even come up here and really sharpen that reality, huh? Now, I did a lot of this base work, so I didn't have to do every single thing lighter. But that little contrast, that touch, that commitment, what I'm doing is going to make a big, big difference. Feel like you can detail out your waterfall. Now we have the white edge where it's falling down. We have control over it now. Take advantage of that control. Take advantage. <laughs> no, it's just, you're okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but do. I can use my little detail brush here to talk about that little... Make little splashes, can't I? Even shape that splash more, you know, for what I'm trying to do. Find that little highlight there. Help that little edge stand out. You see that little ledge now. We're going to just work it. Little blue picks up on my brush. I work it through. Helps me shade that foam there. Look at that. Having fun. All right. Now, if I, you know, I want to work my stuff here, I'll make my phthalo blue, phthalo green, a little heavier on the phthalo green. You know, maybe coming over here. Along that far bank where things are in shadow, right? Maybe along there. Right? And get some white into it and really detail out this front part of the fall which is in our middle ground which is kind of the focus of the piece you need darker you got darker you need lighter, you got lighter. 
still doing the same horizontal strokes, but these are more detailed and delicate and helps us talk about the movement of the water and helps us like relax into what we're doing. Now I may go ahead and add some yellow to it. Palettes, right? Some yellow that can get into all this right here, as you might want. And then a bunch into this. And these colors. Just refining the design. I'm coming under the trees. I'm going to get into my phthalo blue. Make sure that I shade those spaces. Look at that shading coming out in the water. Isn't that wonderful? Pulling those trees. It's going to put them in the water where you want them. You know, we can even exaggerate some of the space here. A bit. Look at that. Some of that coming through here. It's a little bit under shadow. I can take my brush just wet and look, just blend it out a bit. If I want to. Coming back into my green and white. That sort of wonderful turquoise I've got going here. Run that out a bit. And when that's worked, yellow into it. Oh, so bright green, right? And lots and lots of the white. Playful, enjoyable, back and forth. Maybe like here, there could be a little bit of this coming along. And I'm sure more of that coming down this way. So just finding the front edge of that fall and starting to talk about the tonality. Nice dark green right here. And I might take the dark green and the blue and come in and be like, oh no, it's very dark. In this space. Up and down on that fall. Certainly over here. So we're definitely shading. We're definitely thinking about what we're doing. Maybe a little more blue here. Get that purple into it. I love when that dark value gets into it. I'll pull some of that even into the green See what I'm doing. Green, the purple and the blue. Just brushing that back up. Sculpting out what is going on with our falls. If you need more water, get it. We're actually close to done. Yeah. We don't have that much more to go. And we're now in that final third. 
of the painting where everything starts to come together and For be sure. the painting we were hoping to have when we started this. Now, hopefully, if you go do that very, you know, that super one half hoot beginner waterfall I have on the channel, it's just done with a fan brush and a simple technique. It will actually help you see what happened that's in common with that one, right? And this one. They have quite a lot in common. Make sure that that's quite dark back here. Quite dark back here. Again, shaping and shading. Making sure that what we have is what we mean to have. As much as the white water is important to a waterfall, the shadow is too. Yeah, that makes sense. You need both desperately. Or you have nothing. Now, I've got this wonderful blue-green color. I'm going to take a little yellow into it. I'm going to take quite a lot of white. Sure, I've got good flow on my brush. You get up, get up. Remember, prepper the rapper. That's oh where the gosh. closed captioning. Apologize to everyone who does closed captioning. I mumble, and that's what went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you mumbled in prepper the rapper too. Yes, I did, but I still won the game. Well, y'all weren't looking. I mean, it happened. You can't take that away. That is a thing that happened. Mix, mix, mix the flower in the bowl. <laughs> mix, mix, mix the flower in the bowl. That was the best game! Okay, I'm okay. So I'm just coming here and just trying to make sure that I've got this nice little path of light through the water towards the fall. Just mixing these back and forth. Detailing it out. Get your details in. This is much lighter over here on this side. You can tell that that's what's happening. That's nice. I like that. I like it. Yeah. Now, no, this. This. What you doing this over and there? And more with? white. So quinacridone, black, and some oh. fresh titanium white. There it is. There it is. Oops, there it is. All right. I'm going to load up first into my black. Notice I'm thinning it and swirling it into the brush. little branches in this crazy little bush that has decided to grow here. See it? Nice. Again, contrast super helpful in this case. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just on the toe of the brush, I'm just very lightly putting those out. I'm going to work this front edge a bit while that's having a rest. And again, we're just letting the water fall. Detailing little spots of our fall. 
as you would. If you need more water, get that on in there. Work those little details. Getting a little, little white water coming down. Letting it hit different little rocks, letting it hit different little bumps as it wants to. Then in and out so it'll flow nicely off my brush. Now a cool thing that I can do is where I've detailed out, if I want to leave that detail line, I can, and then I can come with a dry brush like this. See that? And blend out that work there. Super doable, super fun. Uh, skipping a little light along here. And again, let's detail out this waterfall like we've done before, like we may do again. Matching a little highlights, the little details that perhaps are going on. Working them, right? I'm just out of John's way. Oh, you're doing great. How are they doing? How are you guys doing? They seem to be doing really, really good. They're enjoying this waterfall. This is like been a really good waterfall painting for a lot of folks. Yeah, it just it just gets into it, doesn't it? it does gets into it. We don't we don't glide over it. We don't barely talk about it. We're like in it. Mm-hmm. In this little highlight right here. Well, my blue and two, so it's light, but it's not, it's lighter than what's here, that it's not our lightest color, right? So that that part is still, and then maybe more into that blue, because we're in shadow. So what have we learned? That the water changes color almost in our perce perception based on if it's light or shadow. Bring a lighter value and coming here and just making sure that we've got a nice little area where that's hitting. And still coming down here. And maybe this time with just a little more, you know, white into it. Not a perfect white. Got a little pigment, but it's a lot lighter. I'm 
And then, like right here. And this is kind of a weird space, so I'm going to try to turn it so I have a nice angle to it. You know, this got a little rough over here, and I want to be able to say that it did. There we go, talking about some splashes, right? Talk about some splashes. Some splashes. We gotta talk about them. Another layer of water falling down. Different highlights getting accentuated. Now, at this point, the black has had a little bit of a dry, so guess what we can do? Mm. We can take our yellow over to our quinacridone and just warm it just a touch. We still want it still to appear quinacridone and we're going to get a bunch of the white on there. If I need to dip in, I will. Do some little detailing on your tree. A little detailing? Yeah. Detail your tree a bit. Put little leaves out maybe further than your little brush did. Put little defined, hard-edged little strokes. Look at that, we come up here, we find a little bow of light, don't we? Just a little bit of extra detailing, like down here, maybe across the, the branches. And it says this is just a little bit different than what's behind it. Wasn't that lovely? Yeah. Now, get a little pink on your brush. And just for hoots. Make sure. There's a little bit around the trees. As if they've dropped leaves or it's reflecting a little pink. It's doing a thing. And little reflections kind of perked up here and there, right? Along here. The edge of the water catching the light before it falls, right? Catching the edge of the water before it falls. And now we're really starting to see that front fall happen. You know, we're starting to feel that. I know that. Putting on a little more white. Wherever I put it, it's the biggest tube I have. I should be able to see it.
I'm going to come here and just add a little bit of this blue here because there's a bit of a shadow. Back into my turquoise, which I like. All right, blending that in. Making a little water splash. A little chunkier. It's a little more aggressive here, isn't it? There's a force of water afoot. I'm going to go ahead and run. Pretty distinctive little bead there, but I'm going to pull it down with my little scruffy brush. See what I'm doing? Yeah. So I use that one brush to get a sharp edge, and then this brush to get this sort of blended ball. And I may turn my canvas to this side, still taking my like kind of crazy brush. Just make sure that I've incorporated that part of the fall. And I'll just come back through with my original fall brush, just trying to make sure Which, that I've got what, some... What is that original fall brush? The number six Cambridge. Okay. Kind of piece some of that detail out, right? Yeah. Exaggerate some of it. Not all of it, just some of it. It's pretty good. So. It's going to be a... kind of a weird thing, but right here, and I really thought it was nice, so I left it in is this sort of branch that is going to wander in here over kind of over this way. So I'm going to bring that little branch shape in. And I'm going to give some substructure to it, right? And I'll make sure that's dry so I can put the little detail leaves. All right. Okay. So if you're using your air mover at home, make sure you use it on the lowest heat setting because that will cause not good stuff to happen to acrylic paint. So don't use heat. <laughs> don't use heat. All right. Let's get the pink on here. A little bit of white to help it show. Too much water on there. Every paint, every acrylic paint has a slightly different water tolerance. So like I'll, I'll find like golden paint is thirstier than say Holbein or the abstract acrylic. And what I mean by thirstier is it takes more water to thin the go golden. Okay, I'm just tapping in these very individual structured little leaves. Now I may need to turn this a bit to the side just so I have a nice angle for it. And I will have some of these kind of cascading down. Much like the falls. And so I am just painting the shape of the tree again, but I'm doing it with these very, see how these are all very soft marks because of the scruffiness of the brush? 
because the cleanness of this brush, these are very sharp marks, and it makes it feel like those are more in focus. Things that are fuzzy appear more out of focus. Things that are sharp appear more in focus. Okay, to pull some of these out as if they're cascading down. They are. All right, so we've got that there. And get some yellow, get some white, and some pink. All very loosely mixed. Can you see how loosely mixed that is? Mm, yeah. Finding little bits of details I can play with. You'll see me just dipping, but I'm not, look at, it's just, it's just a mishmash, isn't it? The light. Back into the pink. So I'm just constantly changing the value. I do do some things like I'll make sure over here maybe the value slightly darker and I may ex add more white when I'm over on the side I perceive as having a lighter value here towards what we've said is the light. Little weird unconscious things as artists do is we will make adjustments for things. We'll be like, oh, there's light here, so I might want to make those just a bit brighter than the ones over here on the left. Now we're just touching out these little leaves, making this wonderful little tree. Not in your way, am I, babe? Nope. Fun stuff. Make those little marks. Making fun marks. You got to make them fun marks. Yeah, we're just having fun doing that forward branch. Then, because we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take our little brush. Actually, I might take the this here and get into the white a bit. There we go. And I'll come here over here to the side where the water is falling down. Make a little mark. A little sharp mark. A little mark that says I was here. This was me, what I did with my Saturday. I just made my P&R. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there you go. Fixed. <laughs> you're gonna get. You're gonna have to make sure you don't overly roll your R. You could upset pop culture phenomenon. 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 Do 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 do. All right, I'm gonna stand back and take a look. You guys take a look too at yours. Look at it. You know, you want to look at it from a distance, ask yourself, you know, am I happy with the values? Is there anything I overreach? Do I need to change the level of oh, direction yeah. of everything? Do I feel like I captured it? Do I want to take it to another brighter level anywhere? So that's that time. This is that time. Because remember, you can play with this for hours and hours past you what can. I do. But All right, you I'm have turn. to come back. You're going to go up there? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I should have said something. <laughs> I thought that was the go away look at it. And then right, come well, back anyway, we're here. Okay. Hi, there it is. That's it is. the waterfall. It looks good. We did it. We did it. We did it. So I really like taking digital paintings and kind of translating them into acrylic paintings. I think it's a fun way to design. Um,
You didn't rehearse apps that, that are good for that are like Painter and Procreate and uh, Photoshop are all fantastic apps for that. And they'll yeah. have brushes and there's so many tutorials out there for it. Um, so if you have your phone or you have those things, remember that's something you can do with your photographs. It's something you can do with your designing. You can get into it in digital space and then you can turn it into a watercolor, a pastel or an acrylic. Perfectly acceptable part of the artistic process. Mm -hmm. So did, did you rehearse this one at all? Oh, no. No, they just painted it. Just Yeah. No. I pretty... always worry when that gets asked if it's like, is it not good? No, it's really <laughs> good. I think what it is is that people are always surprised that you don't practice all of these. And you have a certain set of skills that allows you to look at the painting and do it just without ever having practice. And that's a pretty impressive thing. So people are often curious, like, is this a rehearsed one or is this one you're just doing unrehearsed. from the I, hip? You know, I had a little digital design that I worked from and thought, oh, this would make a really good painting. And then I, I felt like what I saw there would translate well to acrylic paint. So I chose that um, and then just painted. Yeah, no, this is true. That's great. based on a decision that I made. Yeah. Other paintings that you see may have had a study or two, but I don't even consider those rehearsals. Those are me working out some design elements. But when I'm painting from a photograph, I'm not really working out design elements. I've got those sort of worked out from that reference. If I'm painting right. from a digital sketch, I don't have that many design elements to work out, hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But if I'm working from just my imagination, sometimes I think up crazy stuff and it should be edited. So you are not subjected to it. <laughs> As my patrons know, because I've been throwing everything I'd like spit out in there and they're like, oh. You do a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, all the time. Who knows? So. <laughs> this has been fun. I love this painting. This turned out nice. Happy Saturday. Yeah. Have a very wonderful weekend. I love you guys so much. I so appreciate your courage and your time and your bravery. Every time you step into one of these paintings, every time you trust me with your time, I am deeply humbled and respectful of that because I know how meaningful our free time is for all of us in this modern society. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you and Anisa really soon. Bye-bye.